Good morning, lunatics. Welcome to Morning Java. Morning Java brought to you, as always, Taylor, by our good friends at the Gitco Cafe and Market, where, unlike what Hunter Homestuck wants you to think, you can actually get marinara with your mozzarella sticks, and it's yeah. dang good. But if you're a marinara person, you can get marinara with it. They have a bunch of different sauce options. I think most of them are immoral. I think marinara is the way to go. I don't know why you'd do anything else. <laughs> yeah, no, I've dipped mozzarella sticks and things other than marinara, but... It's not that it's bad. It's not like it's going to make it bad, but, I mean, marinara. Marinara. Let's talk about a different mayor. Let's talk about John Marino. Oh How about that for God. a transition, Taylor? Oh <laughs> Segways yeah. are us over here. Yeah. I want to talk about John Marino because this guy, I think what, what I really find interesting about the Harvard grad, or not grad, as you've informed me, is that Almost. he has <laughs> some weird incentives built into his contract. And yeah. You wrote a little bit about this because this is, it's different. It's not something you expect for, for a college kid that's not coming to the NHL in the more traditional way. Yeah, I mean, he's probably one of the, the more highly touted defensive prospects right now. He's probably number three in the system behind Joseph and Addison. Um, you know, they just acquired his rights from Edmonton and then signed him to an entry-level contract. What you're talking about is he, um, he, he has performance bonuses written into his contract that um, his, his base salary is like, you know, 800-something thousand. He could almost double that with performance bonuses, which is kind of unusual. But, I mean, he's... If they need to call up a young defensive prospect, there's not many options down in Wilkes-Barre, and um, he seems to have an NHL future. I mean, he's he plays physical. He's a great skater. Um, he didn't he didn't put up many points at Harvard, um, but I mean, as a defenseman in college, like you're you're probably gonna get most of your points on the power play. Um, he was behind Adam Fox at Harvard, who he, I mean, he's eaten up you know all the power play minutes. Um, he. And his game, it seems to complement a lot of different types of defensemen. He can, he played with shutdown guys often. He was paired with a more offensive-minded defenseman his junior year. So, I, like, I think what's going to stand out to people from, from everything you just told me is that this is a college defenseman through Edmonton, and now they're thinking, Justin Schultz, we're going to get another Justin Schultz. Yeah, I mean, he, he really didn't have a lot of value to Edmonton. Um, as much of a mess as Edmonton is, they're actually pretty okay on defensive prospects. Um, so he, he probably wasn't going to sign with them. Um, so he left as a junior to, to go, you know, they traded him so the pets, so another team could sign him before he hit free agency. Um, I don't, I mean, and the Penguins only had to give up a six round pick to get him. I mean, it, it, it looks like a steal either way right now. And he's probably wicked smart. <laughs> All right, Taylor. So one of the last things that I remember about last Penguin season is Chris Letang giving it back to a reporter about how if he was just focusing on being a stay-at-home defenseman, he'd probably stop, like, you know, the offensive production, and then we'd be mad at him for that. Um, a number of Penguins are playing in different leagues. Jake yeah. Gensel's up in the, the beauty league, and, and Chris Letang, of course, is playing and putting up, like, monstrous he, numbers. He literally scored, like, 30 points in five games in, in the Montreal Pro League, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's like me in the adult league. Maybe <laughs> just explain a little bit about, like, what – what benefit these guys have yeah. playing against, you know, lesser competition or more open ice competition. Yeah, I mean, so so these guys get together over the summer anyway. You, I mean, even if they're not playing in a, a summer league, I mean, you see them Dub getting, beauty league. you know, Crosby's getting together with Marchand and um, Jack Hughes and uh, McKinnon. So, I mean, they do that anyway, but this is a little bit more organized. The different, you know, leagues have different rules. Some of them it's three on three. Um, some of them play, you know, a full 60 minutes. Uh, they get together. It's, <laughs> I mean, if, if you look at the highlights or, even, you know, just the stats, th there's no defense. Um, it, it, the, it's not that competitive. So it, it's not like they're out there, like, risking injury right, right. or, like, wearing themselves out. Um, and it, looking, so, like, the, the beauty league is the, the popular one. That one's more for, you know, the fans. Um, they sell tickets. Um, I know, like, the Montreal League, they sell tickets and it benefits charities. So, I mean, it's a cool way for them to interact with fans. We Have need fun. to get, like, the Beauty League in, like, NHL 2021 or something. Like, I want to play, like, three-on-three, three, just open ice. Yeah. Jake Gensel is scoring six goals a game. You yeah, know? I mean, yeah, he's their leading scorer this season. He's actually the league's all-time leading scorer. Um, you know, they could win the John Scott Cup this season. He's hey. playing for Team Jack Link's Beef Jerky. You know, uh, Teddy Bluger's in that league, Bukestad, Clayton Phillips is in that league, you know, so they could uh, bring I've, home the John Scott I, Cup. I've got a John Scott uh, autograph in it. Somewhere. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to name a trophy after a guy, you 
It's a good, good Pe guy. People's, legend. People's champ. Legend. <laughs> Taylor, I went back recently and read a piece on the Players' Tribune by Brian Trottier, mm -hmm. letter to my younger self, uh, where he kind of openly <laughs> regrets some of his trash talk, particularly to Brian Bellows <laughs> as a younger guy, not knowing that one day YouTube would exist, uh, not knowing that there were, you know, microphones that could pick up his voice and whatnot. Now we see players kind of controlling and creating their own content mm -hmm. in the world in the way that Juju Smith-Schuster does. Um, obviously, he's a star in that regard. But we're seeing some of the players uh, that particularly you know more about putting out content, like just crushing the weights, absolutely, like... Um, you know, Sidney Crosby of all players going on spit and chicklets and just spilling some. Souls. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of unusual to see hockey players big on I guess social and showing much of a personality. But um, I mean a lot of them. The, the Crosby thing, if, for people that listen to it, I've never heard him in an interview more relaxed. Like seem more like a person he's swearing in the interview like it was it was weird to listen to but I mean I don't know maybe you gotta have him with Bissonette and Whitney to like disarm yeah, like, him but I mean that's great summer content like and he, he told so many stories um his dog crapping all over Mario Lemieux's house I mean that's yeah that's the kind of stuff people like people like seeing like guys have a personality well, in their life he's he's so much more relatable yeah. now don't you think like most of the time uh, especially media like fans look at him and he's so relaxed and you know he's so humble as yeah. well as what we always hear i mean truthfully the guy has just been he's been raised since he was like before he was walking mm -hmm. to be this face of the nhl and mm -hmm. his whole life has, has led to this but then he gets in front of a couple of guys <laughs> that he played with yeah. you know one guy who used to have in his twitter bio like oh i played on a line with Sidney crosby and evgeny malkin and it was only like to defend the guy <laughs> the, the guys so I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's fun. You know, it's it makes Crosby so much more relatable. Less of that, uh, you know, like perfect response type of thing that that we always hear about. Yeah, and they tell a lot of those behind the scenes stories about guys on the Penguins too. Like a, a couple of people, um, Crosby, Vitali, talk it have gone on spit and chicklets now and talked about how Malkin doesn't learn the names <laughs> of the teammates. Yeah. He doesn't like. They took him out to. It was like a rookie party, and they pointed at you know like Connor Sherry, and it's like. What's his name? And he's like shares, you know, like no one knows his first name. What's his full name? And he he just did. <laughs> I mean, that kind of stuff. That's in, that's that's great. Like, well, that happens at, at DK too. Yeah. You know, we have Dave Molinari, the superstar, and he walks through the hallways at the office, and he's just like, "Hey, son, uh, thir <laughs> Thursday." No, obviously, I'm kidding. Dave loves me and knows my name. I think. Um, yeah. 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 Well, and they just they just did that video, Bissonette, Whitney, McKinnon, Crosby. They went golfing, and just. I mean, seeing them having a good time like that, screwing around on the golf course. Yeah. It's, it's, just like, it's just nice to see athletes be, see, look like humans and that kind of stuff. Content. Content.